Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I wanted to recreate two hats that Emily wore in the show called Emily in Paris on Netflix. I'm sure you heard about it or even watched it. So I'm going to show you how to make a bucket hat and a beret. I tried to copy the design that she wore in the show so I made a red beret and a plaid kind of patchwork looking bucket hat but you can use any fabric and any color you like so you don't have to recreate the same exact design. For the red beret you will need some wool felt, some paper to create a pattern, I'm going to use this wrapping paper, some fabric scissors, some pins, a pencil and a measuring tape. So the diameter for the hat will be 30 cm, which means you'll need to draw a circle with a 15 cm radius. If you have a compass this will be pretty easy, if not you'll need to either find something that has the 30 cm circumference or use this trick that I am using. Tie a string to your pencil and measure 15 cm from the center of your circle so you'll need to hold the pencil down on the center and just move it around to create a circle. Then you'll need to cut it out and this will be the size of the beret so the part that you'll see on top of the beret if that makes sense. We are going to call this the outer circle. Now you'll need to fold this in half and cut it through the middle and now we need to determine the size of your inner circle, so basically the part that goes on your head. For this you'll need to measure around your head, maybe not exactly like you would measure for a beanie for example, because the beret doesn't come as far down on your forehead as a beanie or a hat. Now you'll need to take that measurement and divide it by 2 times pi, so by 6.28. My circumference was 56 cm, so I divided it by 6.28 and I got 8.9 cm, so I rounded it up to 9 cm. And this is my radius. Now from the midpoint of your half circle, to figure this out you can just fold it in half and make a mark. You'll need to measure 9 cm and make as many marks as you need to be able to connect them and draw a half circle. Then you'll need to cut this out and these are your patterns for the beret. Now let's move on and transfer this to our fabric. Take your fabric and fold it in half. Make sure that you place the pattern on fold, just like this. Then cut out your first circle. The inner circle pattern needs to be placed on fold as well. Pin it in place and cut it out. And these are the two pieces that you'll need to sew together to create a beret. From the scrap fabric I'm going to cut out a small piece that we are going to sew on top of the beret. This is approximately 7 cm long and 1 cm wide. And I'm going to fold it in half before sewing it on. Now place the two pieces one on top of the other, pin them in place and sew them along the outer edge. I'm using a basic straight stitch and some matching thread. Then I trimmed away the seam allowance as close to the stitches as possible. And I also made some tiny cuts along the edge of the fabric to make turning it out easier. Next I folded my beret to determine the middle and I made a mark using a pin and I'm going to add the stem right there. I think the easiest way is to sew this by hand but I'm just going to use my sewing machine and sew it with my regular straight stitch. And that's all. It wasn't that hard, wasn't it? Now let's move on to the bucket hat. Since I wanted to recreate the same exact design that Emily wore in the show, I tried to find some similar fabric and I've decided to use these two flannel shirts. Besides your fabric, you will need your fabric scissors, a pencil, a measuring tape, some pins and of course the patterns. I'm going to leave a link under this video where you can download the patterns for free. And if your fabrics are soft and lightweight like mine are since I am using some shirts, you'll probably need some fusible interfacing. 
This will add some stiffness to your fabric and basically make your hat look like a hat. Of course, if you are using a stiffer fabric to begin with, you can skip this step. While looking for fusible interfacing at home, I noticed that I only had some iron-on double-sided interfacing. Yes, that's what it's called. So basically you can use this interfacing to stick two pieces of fabrics together. So I'm going to go ahead and use this and add a cotton fabric that is stiffer to one side of my fabric. I've ironed this on and this is how it looks like. I know it's not the prettiest combination, but it will work just fine. Here I had a final look at the design just to make sure that I'm cutting out the right colored pieces for my hat. I'm using the circle pattern to cut out the top of my hat out of this blue plaid fabric. Then you'll need two pieces for the side of the hat, so basically the headband. And four pieces, this will need to be cut on fold for the brim. So these are the things that you'll need if you want to create a regular hat, but since we are making a specific design, I've cut out four pieces for my headband. Two of those are in a green plaid and two of those in a blue plaid and I'm going to combine them later. First you'll need to place those two headband pieces right sides facing each other and sew them on each end. Then press the seams and turn this right side out. Now I'm going to fold the green pieces about 3 quarter of the way diagonally and cut off the excess fabric. Then place this on top of your already existing headband. I'm going to place this right over the side seam so this will be hidden. Pin these in place and sew them using a straight stitch. Since the green pieces don't connect at the back, I'm just going to fold the edges inwards and sew them using a straight stitch. Now to connect the headband with the top of your hat, you'll need to turn the headband inside out and pin it all the way around your circle. Now you can go ahead and sew it using a straight stitch. And this is how the hat looks like by now. Now we're going to set this aside for a bit and work on the brim. Pair these four pieces and place them right sides facing each other. Pin them and sew these edges using a straight stitch. Now that these are connected, you'll need to place them right sides facing each other. It kind of looks like a sandwich, so you'll need to place one on the inside and one on the outside. Then pin these two pieces together and sew them right here along the longer edge. Turn your brim right side out and use an iron to press the seams. And then you'll need to create those lines that are specific for the bucket hat. So you'll basically need to sew straight stitches that are about half a centimeter apart from each other all around the brim. You can either measure and draw some lines if you want to make sure that the stitches are the same distance apart. But I'm just going to go ahead and use my sewing foot as a guide. Now to connect the brim to the hat, you'll need to place the brim on top of your hat just like this. So you'll end up pinning the two raw edges together. Pin all the way around and then sew using a straight stitch. And now you can go ahead and use a zigzag stitch to finish up all the edges on the inside of the hat and make sure that nothing frays. And this is my finished bucket hat. As I've said, you can use any fabric that you like. You don't have to recreate the same design that I did. 
I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and I'll see you in my next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.